join us on Patreon, and become part of our journey to uncover history's untold stories. Your support helps us create in-depth content, bring hidden narratives to life, and keep history alive for everyone. The history of mathematics is often told as if it were a straight line, running neatly from the Greeks to Descartes to Newton and Leibniz, with the occasional flash of brilliance in between. Names like Archimedes, Galileo, and Euler are repeated in endless textbooks, and the canon of great mathematicians is written in stone. But what happens when a figure does not fit the narrative that has been so carefully constructed? What happens when brilliance emerges from an unexpected corner of the world, from someone society has chosen to silence? That is where the story of Benjamin Banneker begins, a black mathematician and astronomer in 18th century America who solved mathematical and astronomical problems that even Isaac Newton, the towering genius of calculus and gravity, could not fully resolve. Banneker's name often appears in passing footnotes, his work reduced to a curious anecdote in the wider history of the Enlightenment. He is remembered vaguely as a free black man who corresponded with Thomas Jefferson or as someone who published an almanac. But beneath these surface mentions lies a much deeper reality. Banneker was not simply an almanac maker or a polite intellectual curiosity of the era. He was a mathematician and scientist who, with little formal training and no access to the vast European libraries, tackled problems of celestial motion and timekeeping that remained unresolved since Newton's Principia. To understand Banneker's accomplishment, one must imagine the world in which he lived. Born in 1731 in Baltimore County, Maryland, Benjamin Banneker entered a society that systematically denied education to black people, enslaved or free. He was born free, but the freedom was fragile and fraught with limitations. Access to schools was almost non-existent for someone of his background. Yet, Banneker developed a deep love of mathematics and mechanics from an early age. It began with puzzles and patterns, his fascination with numbers nurtured by what little exposure he had to books through Quaker neighbors. When most of his contemporaries believed intellectual pursuits with exclusive domain of white men, Banneker dared to teach himself advanced mathematics and astronomy. The legend of Banneker often begins with his clock, a mechanical wonder he built entirely from wood at the age of 22. Using only a borrowed pocket watch as a model, he carved every gear and cog by hand. The clock kept perfect time for decades, striking the hour with precision unmatched by many European imports of the period. But what made this achievement remarkable was not merely the craftsmanship, but the mathematical understanding behind it. To calculate gear ratios, pendulum lengths, and escapement timing, Banneker had to grasp principles of proportion, periodic motion, and mechanical geometry. In other words, he had to rediscover for himself much of the mathematics of applied mechanics that Newton and Galileo had set forth, but he did so in isolation, without access to their published works. The clock was only the beginning. As Banneker's intellectual curiosity deepened, he turned to astronomy, the study of the heavens that had challenged mathematicians since antiquity. By the mid-18th century, Newton's laws of motion and gravity had provided a grand framework, but in practice, applying these laws to the complex movements of celestial bodies was fiendishly difficult. The so-called three-body problem, predicting the motions of three gravitationally interacting bodies such as the Earth, Moon, and Sun, remained unsolved, and Newton himself admitted his inability to find an exact general solution. Even the tides and eclipses, governed by this gravitational dance, required intricate calculations and approximations. It was into this unsolved territory that Banneker stepped. With astronomical tables, his own handmade instruments, and a tireless devotion to calculation, he began predicting eclipses and charting planetary positions with astonishing accuracy. In the 1780s, while still living on a small Maryland farm, Banneker undertook the daunting task of calculating a full solar eclipse. He worked through trigonometric computations by hand, applying principles of spherical geometry and gravitation. His prediction for the 1789 solar eclipse proved to be far more precise than many of the widely published European almanacs then circulating in America. This was not a mere parlor trick. It was a demonstration that Banneker had penetrated into the mathematical heart of Newtonian astronomy, 
and had extended it with practical results that Newton himself had struggled to perfect. When Newton first published his Principia Mathematica in 1687, his gravitational theory explained why planets followed elliptical orbits, but the actual calculation of their positions at given times was cumbersome and often approximate. The lunar theory, in particular, resisted precise mathematical treatment. For decades, European mathematicians, including Leonard Euler and Joseph Louis Lagrange, labored over the lunar problem seeking formulas to account for perturbations caused by the combined gravitational poles of the Earth and Sunday Banneker, isolated in rural America and without the privilege of European academies, nevertheless managed to calculate lunar and solar positions with enough accuracy to publish his almanacs between 1792 and 1797. These almanacs contain tables of sunrise and sunset, phases of the moon, planetary motions, and predictions of eclipses. They were not copied wholesale from European sources, as some detractors later claimed. Instead, Banneker performed the painstaking trigonometric calculations himself, relying only on a few reference books borrowed from neighbors. The labor required was extraordinary. Each entry in the almanac represented hours upon hours of computation, made with nothing but ink, paper, and Banneker's extraordinary mind. What makes his accomplishment so staggering is that he was essentially working through the same class of problems that Newton left unresolved. Where Newton had said, I cannot calculate the moon's motion without considering more than a hundred equations, Banneker, working without a team of assistants or access to Newton's full body of work, produced predictions that ordinary farmers and sailors could rely upon. This is where history often falters in its recognition of Banneker. His achievements are dismissed as quaint or accidental, rather than acknowledged as groundbreaking. Yet the truth is clear. Banneker solved, in practice, problems that had baffled even Newton. He found workable methods to handle the complexities of celestial mechanics at a time when advanced analytical solutions were still being developed in Europe. His genius was not that of theoretical breakthroughs published in Latin treatises, but of practical mathematics bringing the heavens down to earth in a form that ordinary people could use. Beyond his technical skill, Banneker also grasped the profound cultural weight of his work. In 1791, he sent a copy of his calculations to Thomas Jefferson, then Secretary of State. With it, he included a now-famous letter challenging Jefferson on the hypocrisy of slavery. Banneker reminded Jefferson that a black man denied nearly every opportunity had nevertheless mastered the sciences and demonstrated intellectual equality. His almanac was not just a book of numbers. It was a political document, a proof written in the language of mathematics that human potential knows no color. Jefferson's reply was cautious, even condescending, but he forwarded Banneker's work to the French Academy of Sciences, acknowledging its significance. In this exchange, mathematics became more than numbers. It became a weapon against the ideology of racial inferiority, a declaration that brilliance could not be contained by the chains of prejudice. Banneker's intellectual legacy also challenges us to reconsider how history measures greatness. Newton is rightly remembered as a giant, but his work was made possible by institutions, libraries, and the privileges of a European elite. Banneker had none of these. His isolation meant that every equation was wrestled from scratch, every calculation done by candlelight after a day's labor on the farm. That he could reach a level of precision rivaling European astronomers speaks not only to his genius, but also to the hidden history of black intellectual life in the Atlantic world. The erasure of Banneker's contributions is not accidental. Historiography has long privileged European narratives treating black intellectuals as curiosities rather than as central figures in the history of science. When Banneker's wooden clock eventually stopped working after decades, it was never preserved in a museum. His farmhouse, containing many of his notebooks, tragically burned to the ground on the day of his funeral in 1806, erasing a vast archive of his unpublished work. This loss has fueled centuries of neglect, allowing detractors to minimize his achievements. But even with what survives, his almanacs, his correspondence, and his reputation among contemporaries, the evidence remains overwhelming. He was a mathematician who advanced the practical application of Newtonian mechanics in ways that Newton himself struggled to achieve.
Today, when one reads the astronomical tables in Banneker's Almanac, it is easy to forget the obstacles he faced. But behind every number lies a story of resistance, persistence, and brilliance. It is the story of a black man who, denied a place in the halls of Cambridge or Paris, built his own observatory from a wooden clock and a homemade telescope, and who dared to solve problems that Newton could not. His work stands as both a scientific triumph and a political statement, a reminder that intellectual genius does not belong to one race or continent. Benjamin Banneker's life forces us to widen the frame of history. Mathematics is not merely the story of European geniuses. It is also the story of those who labored in obscurity, whose names were nearly erased, but whose minds reached just as far into the mysteries of the universe. In the end, Banneker's legacy is not only about eclipses and almanacs. It is about the audacity of a man who refused to be bound by the limits that society imposed on him, who looked up at the stars and declared, through calculation and courage, that brilliance cannot be contained.